1. BTS's Suga was driving an electric scooter while drunk. Police reports indicate Suga was found intoxicated and unconscious after falling off an electric scooter. Police officers detected the smell of alcohol upon arriving at the scene and subsequently transported Suga to the local police station for further evaluation. After the news broke out, Suga apologized, and Hive dropped a statement saying the accident happened near Suga's house while he was parking his electronic kickboard. But, CCTV footage showed he was actually on an electric scooter 2.8 kilometers away from home. Hyde later admitted they messed up and updated their statement, I'm beyond disappointed, especially with Hyde trying to cover things up. The CCTV footage shows him dangerously weaving through traffic while drunk, risking a major accident, trying to downplay the situation by mischaracterizing the vehicle was a poor choice and made things worse when the footage came out. Hyde clearly hoped to cover up the incident, but they got caught because of the surveillance video. They should have come clean from the start instead of trying to spin a tail. Also, it's pretty disturbing to see fans bending over backward to excuse drunk driving just to protect Suga. The way some people on Twitter are brushing this off as a minor slip-up is utterly baffling. They're acting like calling it an honest mistake or saying it's not that serious somehow makes it okay. Let's be real, driving under the influence is a major crime, not a small blunder. Just last month, an elderly woman in Korea lost her life when she was hit by reckless high schoolers on an electric kickboard. So for anyone to downplay what Suga did is not just disappointing, it's downright dangerous. 2. The one he hate train is straight up absurd. People are acting like she's the villain in some drama just because she debuted in Illit. The RU Next show ended a year ago, but these folks are still stuck in the past, whining about how their fave should have made the cut. Newsflash. One he didn't rig the system, it's not like she chose to debut over the more skilled trainees. She's just a 17-year-old who got her shot and now people want to crucify her for it? This pretty girl narrative is the most tired excuse out there, they want to tear her down because they think she got by on looks alone? Please, when she gets injured, she's accused of copying new jeans, when she stumbles on a dance move, they say she's talentless, she can't catch a break, no matter what she does, if she blinks wrong, there'll be someone claiming it's part of some grand conspiracy to change Illit's concept just for her, it's all so ridiculous, it's always protect minors until it's someone like Wonhee, Ahayan or Bahi then all bets are off. People throw the nastiest baseless accusations at her without a second thought, like it's some sport. Watching her struggle through a live stream, visibly affected by the hate was painful. It's sickening how stands are so quick to make a teenager the scapegoat for all their frustrations. If you can't say anything constructive, just shut up. You don't have to defend her, but there's no need to tear her down either. The relentless cruelty is disgusting. 3. The constant whining about favoritism within the BTS fandom is embarrassing at this point. The notion that V, Jimin and Jungkook are getting all the love while the rest are being ignored? Give me a break. Let's talk about expectations because some of y'all seem to have lost touch with reality. First off, not everyone is going to stream every member's solo work equally. That's just how it is and it's not some grand conspiracy against the rap line or anyone else. People have different tastes, biases and actual lives. Demanding that fans consume every piece of content equally is borderline delusional. Plus, Pop music pulls in more listeners, it's mainstream, it's catchy and when you add English lyrics into the mix, you're tapping into a much larger market. So yes, Jungkook and Jimin are going to get those high streaming numbers. And no, that doesn't mean the fandom hates the others. Different genres pull different crowds. Rap will never get the same numbers as pop. It's a niche within a niche, especially in K-pop. This obsession with charts and streams is toxic. It's not the only way to measure success. Just because a song didn't hit number one on Spotify doesn't mean it's a failure. RM and J-Hope's albums achieved so many awards and recognition, but fans were too busy comparing views and streams to notice. This constant pressure to perform in numbers is doing more harm than good. But don't think Hybe is off the hook here. They've dropped the ball big time when it comes to promoting non-pop releases. The rap line is struggling in streams because Hybe doesn't have a clue how to market them outside of the K-pop bubble. They need to stop pushing every song the same way and start targeting the right audiences. Rap fans aren't hanging out on K-pop channels, so why is that the primary focus? 4. Soyeon might be signing with Hybe labels. Previously, Cube confirmed that Soyeon's contract is ending in November and they're currently still negotiating a possible renewal. But it has now been reported that Soyeon is eyeing several companies, including Zico's subsidiary label under Hybe. Rumors even suggest she might debut her own group under Zico's label, personally. If Soyeon ends up going the Zico route, it wouldn't be all that surprising. Zico's label has been carving out a unique space, and adding Soyeon to the mix could take things to another level. Hybe could give her the freedom and resources that Cube just can't provide, especially considering that her old production team is collaborating with Zico for their upcoming group. 
That's a huge hint that Soyan might actually sign with them and take control of the project, given what Boy Next Door has been doing, a project between Soyan and Zico could be groundbreaking. Lastly, Soyan leaving G-Idol entirely is off the table. We've seen how other idols like Mamamoo managed to juggle multiple contracts and it wouldn't be shocking if Soyan did the same, Cube would likely jump at the chance to keep her in any capacity, especially given how much she's contributed to the group's success. 5. Zhang Yun not being skinny is none of your business, the backlash against Zhang Yun's appearance is a perfect example of how superficial and toxic some fans and critics can be. It's absurd that in 2024, people are still obsessing over a woman's weight as if it's the only thing that defines her worth. Let's get something straight, Zhang Yun isn't out of shape, she's just not fitting into the narrow outdated mold that people expect. First of all, she's in excellent shape. Finishing a year-long tour, playing sports like tennis and snowboarding and being active on a regular basis, does this sound like someone who's unhealthy? The fact that she had to take steroids for a neck injury and that it caused weight gain isn't just okay, it's a reality that she's dealing with, like any other human being would. The idea that she should be criticized for her body responding to necessary medical treatment is absolutely ludicrous. The hate being directed at her stylists is just as ridiculous. The real issue here isn't the styling. It's that people can't accept that Zhang Yun's body has changed. Guess what? That's called life. Bodies change. She's nearly 28. She's not going to look like she did when she was 20. And why should she? Expecting her to conform to some twisted ideal is not just unrealistic. It's misogynistic and dehumanizing. Zhang Yun's weight is her business. Full stop. She's healthy, active and crushing it as an artist. Which is a hell of a lot more than can be said for the armchair trolls dissecting her appearance online. It's high time people stop reducing her to a number on a scale and start recognizing her for the talented hardworking performer that she is. 6. I'm not against debuting members for their visuals, but balance is key, companies know what they're doing. They want to cover all bases, having a member who's great at variety shows, brand endorsements, or simply looks stunning on camera can definitely pull in fans who might not be as invested in the music itself. It's about marketability and visual sell, that's just the reality of the industry, but here's where it gets messy. When companies stack a group with too many visuals and not enough talent to back it up, if you've got strong vocalists in the group, they can lift up the weaker ones, masking any shortcomings. A well-balanced group means even if a few members aren't the best singers, the overall sound stays solid. But if the whole group is just so-so, the weak links start to stick out like a sore thumb. In bigger groups, it's easier to hide that one member who can't really sing, but in smaller groups, there's no place to hide. If you don't have at least one powerhouse vocalist to keep things afloat, that weak member is going to drag the whole group down, it's like having a leaky boat, without someone to patch it up, the whole thing sinks, older groups got this balance right, visuals were put together with some thought, and the vocal balance was key, nowadays though, it seems like some companies are too quick to rely on autotune and post-production magic to smooth things over instead of, building a group that can actually deliver live. 7. Let's review IVE's Japanese comeback crush, IVE's Korean discography is top tier, but their last two title tracks Heya and Batty were underwhelming, but new Japanese single Crush feels like a much-needed course correction. It's a perfect blend of what makes Ives sound stand out, catchy melodies, a strong beat, and that lush almost cinematic feel with the strings, the vocals hit hard from the start, with layers that give the song a grand almost regal vibe. That pre-chorus is the real MVP here, it strips everything back and lets the vocals take center stage, reminding everyone that Ives got the chops, it's a refreshing change from their previous tracks, which felt a bit too safe. Crush might not be on the same level as I Am or Love Dive, but it's a solid addition to their catalog. Compared to Japanese debut Wave, it's a huge step up. Wave was cute but forgettable. Crush has staying power, it's melodic. It's memorable and it's I've getting back to what they do best. 8. Mamalin's Daisy recently spoke up about her 2019 dating scandal with icons Yu Young. And it's a brutal reminder of how twisted the industry is. Imagine being caught in the crossfire of your own agency's paranoia. When Daisy and Yu Young dating news broke out in 2019, Daisy wanted to deny the whole thing, which makes perfect sense since there were no photos or evidence, and YG denied it as well. But then her agency decided to throw her under the bus and say that the dating rumors were true. Just in case some photos surfaced, it's like they were more concerned about saving face than protecting their idols, and the best part? Daisy straight up confirmed that companies deny true dating rumors if there's no evidence, we always knew the industry was shady, but this is next level, they're basically admitting to lying to fans' faces unless they get caught red-handed. It's no wonder idols are so exhausted and burnt out when they have to navigate this kind of manipulative nonsense. The whole situation is a joke, and Daisy was the punchline. 9. Let's review Bam Bam's comeback last parade. The track starts off with an intro that screams big things are coming, 
but then it pulls a bait and switch with a stripped down hip hop beat that feels out of place. Bam Bam shows he can rap and sing, but the song holds back too much. You get the feeling it's trying to be epic, but it's too stingy with those wow moments. The chorus, where you'd expect things to explode, just limps along. It's almost like it's teasing us, dangling the promise of a killer moment that doesn't really hit until the dance breakdown finally kicks in. And by then, it feels like you've had to slog through the slow parts to get there. Some fans are comparing this to G-Dragon's older stuff. But G-Dragon knew how to keep you hooked with dynamic shifts and rich arrangements. Bam Bam's last parade is like a watered-down version.